Alrighty, well hello there. We have some comparison testing going on tonight on this Sunday evening, November 8th, 2020 at 5.52 p.m. up here in Northeastern Ohio. And over on one camera we have the Canon RF 800 millimeter lens with the 2x extender on there for 1600 millimeters and on the other rig we have the William Optics GT71 APO refractor telescope <laughs> but on this one we have the two Kenko teleconverters on there for 4x and we're using the RA camera for that one. But anyway, when you record externally, you're able to use the magnify zoom that's in the cameras. You can't do it when you're recording in camera, but that's one of the nice things you can use uh, the external recording for. But on both of them, we have it at the 5X. So this 420 millimeter telescope times those four teleconverters puts it at 1680 so 1680 versus 1600 on the RF lens so it's a little bit further reach the only problem is I don't have um, the same camera the Canon R has a 5 and 10x magnify zoom whereas the RA the Astro camera has 5 and 30x so I can't compare it the 10x nuts one I really want to use <laughs> okay this isn't the greatest time of year to be doing this but it is what it is now I don't expect these to come out very well because Jupiter is still so low in the sky this time of year it's up 25 degrees above the horizon Saturn's up about 26 degrees at the moment over in our south southwest sky now what I can do over on the Canon lens one I have it at 10x and I'll show you the worthless I think it's worthless 30x on the RA and like I said they're not gonna come out well we're cutting through so much atmosphere right now hundreds and hundreds of miles so that's not what this is really about. This is a tad hard to do, jiggling. <laughs> Two mounts, telescope, cameras, lenses. But there we go at the 1600 and 1680. And there we go at the times five. I think that takes us to 8,400 millimeters. A little bit more on the telescope. All right, now, now we had the cameras at 1 60th shutter and ISO 800, but we're gonna brighten it up so we can see the moons. All right, there we go. I would like to get a 10x version of that though. And down around the, let me get the other camera just a second. Yeah, it looks like we have a moon planet over there about the 5 o'clock position. You can see it real well on the 30x version. But it's also showing up on the other one too. Cool. All right, now from there, we could try Saturn. And it's probably gonna come out just as bad as this, but that's all right, that's not what we're, we're not after the greatest shots. We're after a comparison here of the Canon lens over the uh, telescope. All right, so we got a clip of both of them at 5X and then one at 10X on the other camera. All right, there we go. We have Saturn at 30X on the one camera with a telescope and 10X over on the Canon RF lens. Actually, Saturn looks like it might be coming in pretty well tonight. 
as well as can be expected for it being so low in the sky. But that's quite cool. And like I said, well, if I didn't say it, I was thinking it. <laughs> the 10x version of the one camera. I'll try to do a crop zoom in Final Cut Pro to match the size. And just so you know, we're not very level here and we're getting a bit of drifting, but that's okay. Both these rigs have a Skywatcher AZ GTI tracking mount on there. And I just did a basic daytime alignment on Jupiter. All right, it's 6.15 p.m. and Saturn should be 25 degrees above the horizon with Jupiter about 24 degrees. And Mars is up, but um, there's trees blocking away and I would have to move all this gear, which it took me four trips just to get everything all set up. So I don't think I'm gonna bother with good old Mars tonight. I hope you don't mind, buddy. <laughs> Anyway, this should be a good comparison, I think. There we go. I put them both on 5X now. Alrighty, this is just a fun comparison between the two. Telephoto lens against the telescope. And I have a feeling they're going to come out pretty similar. And yes, we do lose a lot of sharpness and clarity when you use extenders and teleconverters and, and barlows and all that. But for those of you who've been around for a while, you know that I push the limits and <laughs> it's just something that I do. I enjoy pushing the extremes here. And there are a few people who did want to see the comparison. Um, probably the best comparison is to take pictures during the daytime and I have a few but they're not um, lined up exactly on the right tree branch but I could throw that in just to show but I thought they both looked pretty good now when I did that wow those dogs are going nuts over there now when I did that testing with the other telescope, I did it with prime focus and with the power mate and all that stuff and did it on daytime stuff and the pictures, they, they did not come out well, nor the video, not in the daytime footage. So I have a feeling that something got knocked around. The mirrors probably, the optics might have got uh, messed up. and. Who knows what else happened to it? And the box was crushed. One of the boxes, it comes in all these boxes, but, and one of them was really crushed. So, I don't know if something got damaged along the way, but there was just something not right with that. Anyway, I'll probably get a tongue wagging from some people who say you shouldn't be doing this, but. <laughs> It's my thing, it's what I do. I've been at this for many, many years, pushing the extremes. And if we had better seeing conditions with these uh, planets up higher, I bet they'd come out pretty damn awesome. Now we don't get quite the field of view because I'm using mirrorless DSLR cameras on here and not a dedicated CCD planetary imaging one, but we work with what we've got. And for those unaware, I'm an elderly lady, so I can't handle too much weight and moving the stuff around if it's too heavy. So that's why I didn't go with a big 10 inch, 8 inch, 14 inch, whatever. <laughs> And with those big ass tripods and nah, I can't handle it. 
These little mounts do pretty well though. I'm quite happy with the Skywatcher AZ GTIs. They do a pretty good job of tracking. And in case I get a tongue lashing from another person about, get an equatorial mount. You need that for long exposures. Well, like I mentioned, I can't handle one of those tripods and I don't have a view of the northern sky to do a polar alignment and I'm not gonna jump through the, all the hoops to, <laughs> to do that, especially when I have to constantly move the tripods throughout the night to get one object to another and this and that. So, yeah, somebody stirred me up in the comments section, so. <laughs> but anyway, okay, that's gonna do it. It is now 6.26 p.m. up here in Northeastern Ohio. Boy, oh boy. Noisy Northeastern Ohio. <laughs> Alrighty. Y'all take care. I hope you have a great new week ahead. Bye now. Oh, I thought that was screaming. It's a radio. <laughs>